Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is S and I make Wempai minigame tutorials. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create something called a same game, combining Wempai's own programming language together with Python. Before we begin with this tutorial, it's important to note that you should have at least some basic knowledge of how to use RenPy, as well as some knowledge in Python such as what classes, objects, functions and variables are. If you're not too familiar with Python, you may not be able to utilize this tutorial to its full potential. However, you may still find it interesting and may be able to learn a few things from it. So with that said, let's get started. Let's have a look at what a same game is and how it works. A same game is very similar to a match 3 game where you have a grid of icons or objects and your goal is to try and find as many matching groups of icons as possible to remove these from the grid. A match can only be made if each of the icons in the group are connected vertically, horizontally or both. To remove a match, you simply click on one of the icons in the group. Whenever a gap is formed, any icons residing above is shifted down to take its place. Whenever a whole column becomes empty, all icons to the right will shift left to fill in the gap. Unlike a match 3 game, a same game won't actually generate any new icons at the top of the grid once other ones have been removed. And depending on how good you are at the game, this may leave you with more or less stragglers that cannot be removed. Winning, losing or ending the game depends on your specific implementation. In some games, the game ends when there's no more possible matches. There's also those with a time limit where the game will keep respawning new icons until the time has run out. In a same game, you usually also collect points for the matches that you remove, but you can also have variations where you actually collect the items in the grid that you're removing and use them in some way in gameplay further on. For this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a time limit based game where the game will keep respawning new icons whenever there is no more possible matches. We'll also implement a point based scoring where a certain amount of points is added to the score for each removed icon. All the necessary images that you need for this tutorial is available for download in the description below. Once you have everything you need prepared, we can move on to the next part where we will start actually coding the game. So if you haven't already, you can go ahead and open up your Rempi project in the editor of your choice. I am myself using the Atom editor. And the first thing you want to do is to make sure you have all your images available for the project. I have created three different folders which I have named appropriately according to what they contain so you just want to make sure that you do that yourself as well. I've gone ahead and cleaned up the script file a bit so that we're only left with the start label and now we can start adding our own code to this script. The first thing we want to add is a few variables that will help us in creating the grid and the icons that the player should be able to click on. And because I've already done this before, we're going to go ahead and create these variables with values that I have found works very well for this tutorial. But then later on, once you have gotten a better hang of how we're using these variables, you can go ahead and change them to your liking. So the first variable we will create, we will call grid size. And this will define how big we want the grid to be on screen in cells. So we'll type 100 for this. Another variable we'll need, we'll call icon size. And the icon size we actually want to set to be half of its original resolution. So that will be 50. Next, we'll create a variable called icon padding. And this will define how wide apart we want the grid cells and icons to be. And we'll set this to 2 to begin with. The next variable we'll create, we'll call icons per row. And as the name implies, this will define how many grid cells and icons we want per row. And we'll set this to 10. 
And before we forget, these variables are actually written in Python and so we want to make sure we add dollar signs in front of each of these. Now to actually create and show our grid and icons on screen, we're going to be using something called a sprite system in RunPy, which consists of three different classes called Sprite Manager, Sprite and Snow Blossom. But we are going to only be using two of these, namely the Sprite Manager and Sprite classes. I've added a link to the documentation page on RunPy's website in the description below, so you can read more about how the sprite system works if you wish. In order to use the sprite system in RunPy, we first need to create something called a sprite manager object. And this is the object that we'll use to actually create the sprites that should show on the screen. And in our case, this will be the icons. So let's go ahead and create this object right now. And we can call the object icons. And then we want to write sprite manager. And the sprite manager expects two different parameters. One is called update and the other one is called events. The first parameter expects a function name and this is the function that will run whenever the sprites need to redraw or update. And we can call this function icons update. The next parameter also takes a function name and this is a function that will run whenever a user event occurs, such as mouse movement, mouse click, or for example, a key press on the keyboard. And we can call this function icons events. So now that we have created our sprite manager object, we can go ahead and define some images that we want to use for our icons. And if you remember, I said that I have organized all the different images into three different folders. And here under the icons folder, I put the grid cell image as well as all the different icon images that we should use. Each icon image has two different variants, one being the idle state and the other being a hover state. And these we will switch between in different ways later on. And for this tutorial, we're going to be defining these images into a list so that we can pick from them randomly later on when we want to generate our grid of icons. So let's go ahead and define this list and we can call it icon images. And we only want to pick the idle versions of these images into this list. So we're going to type icon one and we don't have to specify the file extensions as we're going to do this later on. So let's do the other ones as well. We're also going to create another list, which is going to keep all the references to the sprites that we create with the sprite manager. This is going to be useful later on when we want to pick from several of these sprites and do something with them, such as in different user events. So let's go ahead and create this list and we can call it icons list. And for now, we're just going to make it empty as we're going to fill this in a for loop later on. So now that we have created all the necessary variables that we need to begin with, let's go ahead and add our background image to the game. To do this, we can use the scene expression. And let's check what we actually call the background image. So we call it background. So we'll say scene background. Another good thing we can do straight away now is to actually create these functions that we have named up here so that when we want to test our game soon, we won't get errors saying that we haven't defined these functions yet. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And we can do this by creating an init python block and defining our functions. So the first one will be icons update. And we can put a pass statement for now in here so that we don't have to create any specific code for this function straight away. And let's do the same thing with the other function. So icons events and put a pass statement inside. 
So now we could technically test our game to see how it works without any errors being thrown. However, this isn't going to do very much since we haven't really done anything after the scene statement to make the game pause and wait for user input. So let's just go ahead and add a piece of text and we can say this is a minigame tutorial and then also save our project right here. And now we can go into the Rampy launcher and test to see how our game looks like. And as we can see, we didn't get any errors and everything looks as expected. We have a piece of text here, but the background is a little bit too big for our window. And this is because we made the images twice as large as the actual Rempy project size. So in order to fix this, let's go back into the code and create a transform to make the image half the size on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and create this transform up here. And I'm going to call it half size with a Z, not an X. <laughs> and let's say zoom 0 0.5 to make sure that the image will be half the size. And then let's go down here to the scene statement and say at half size so that we apply the transform to this image. And now let's go ahead and check how it looks like. So there we go, now we actually have the image in the right size. And if we were to enlarge the screen for the game, we can see that the image still looks okay and not so extremely blurry, at least on my screen, which is uh, a medium sized screen. So let's go back into the code and see what else we can do. So next, let's create another label that we're going to use to create all the different icon sprites that we want to show on the screen and this label is going to be called from this start label so when the game starts so let's go ahead and create it up here and we're going to call it setup icons and as i mentioned earlier when we created this empty icons list we're going to be filling it by using a for loop with references of the sprites that we're going to be creating with the sprite manager. So let's go ahead and create a for loop and we're going to do this with a python block. So we write python and then we're going to write for i in range and then we're going to specify how many times we want this loop to be looping and we will want to loop it as many times as the grid size, which would be 100 times. So for each grid cell, which is 100, we're going to create an icon. And instead of actually writing 100 here, let's just make a reference to the grid size variable since we already have defined it so that we don't have to repeat a bunch of number in code. So the first piece of code that we will put inside of this for loop is one that is going to randomize an image from this icon images list, which we will use together with our sprite manager object in order to create a new sprite that we put a reference to inside of this icon list. So let's go ahead and do that up here in the for loop. And we want to create a new variable that will store this random image name and we can call it rand image and then we want to make sure that we're picking an image from this list so we'll say icon images and then we can use a random function within rampy in order to generate a random number that will be used to pick an index inside of our icon images list and this random function is called randint and you can get to it by typing rampy random randint and inside of these brackets, we're going to put two numbers, which the random function will use to generate a random value from. So it's going to generate a number between these two values. And we're going to put zero and four to get a value between zero and four. So unfortunately, we're going to have to stop the video right here and continue in part two. So I thank you so much for your time and I hope to see you in the next video.